February 7th was the first anniversary of the death of the Chinese COVID whistleblower, Dr. Li Wenliang. Dr. Li, an ophthalmologist in Wuhan, noticed a SARS-like pneumonia in late December 2019 and sent a warning message to his college friends on social media on December 30th, 2019. Four days later, he was summoned by police to sign a confession letter and was accused of breaking the law for his online messages. He was warned that he would be punished if he continued such illegal activities. Then came the Lunar New Year. The city of Wuhan celebrated the Chinese New Year as usual, including hosting a 10,000 family gathering for a gigantic banquet, an event the government held to mark the Chinese New Year. Four weeks later, shortly after the New Year, Li announced on social media that he had contracted the coronavirus from an infected patient. The post turned out to be his last. He died a week later on February the 7th. His death caused an international outcry and put the spotlight on the Chinese regime's handling of the outbreak. What happened last year in Wuhan during the Chinese New Year changed the world forever. A year has passed. We're approaching Chinese New Year again. What's the rest of the story regarding the whistleblower Dr. Li? And what's really happening with the pandemic inside China now? First of all, China has not accepted the responsibility of the outbreak. On the anniversary of Dr. Li Wenliang's death, Chinese ambassador to the U.S. denied China's responsibility and suggested that the pandemic may have originated in the United States. When asked by CNN if experts from the World Health Organization would be granted full access to China, he challenged the U.S. for not letting the WHO to investigate in the U.S. to find the source. He also denied that the virus may have originated from a wet market or a lab in Wuhan. The second thing we know is that China is still covering up the real situation with the pandemic inside China. In the past two weeks, China's daily new COVID cases are in the double digit. The world's most populous country only saw less than 100 new cases every day. Do we believe that? Well, let's take a look at what's really happening there. Jiangxi province hasn't publicly announced any new infections for months, but one county in the provincial capital of Nanchang suddenly announced an extreme lockdown. The government announced a few days ago, from February 12th to February 26, during the New Year period, no visitor is allowed to enter the residential compounds and villages. The government also banned pharmacies from selling medicines for treating common cold and fever and announced that any resident who has a fever must visit government-run hospitals. This is a measure obviously to ensure that authorities capture all those who have COVID-like symptoms. If there isn't any new cases, why would the local government deploy such extreme measures? In Shanghai, the most populous city in China, the official daily new cases announced are in the single digit. But Chinese netizens have reported that the government is building a big makeshift hospital for COVID-19 patients in Pudong district and another makeshift quarantine center in Songjiang district. Shanghai government certainly denied the projects, but one Shanghai citizen has released a construction blueprint of the makeshift quarantine center online. In Harbin city of northeastern China, Chinese post scores of videos online in recent days showing sealed off residential compounds in areas where authorities have not announced any infections. As more and more residential buildings have been suddenly sealed off, 
Local residents suspect that the government is covering up the real situation of the pandemic. Some communities are completely boarded up. Bus loads of residents were removed from their homes to a quarantine center. Other than food prices getting ridiculously high, the extreme lockdown also has caused human tragedies. In the last week of January, Chinese social media reported three suicides in the city, of which two cases involved the victims jumping out of their buildings, and the other one hanged himself. Dr. Li Wenliang summarized what 2020 was all about in early January 2020 interview. He said, a healthy society should not have just one type of voice. When a society only allows one type of a voice, it's not healthy and can get sick. In early May 2020, four Republican senators introduced a bill to rename the street outside the Chinese embassy in Washington, D.C. to Li Wenliang Plaza. The Chinese regime saw this as a negative publicity for China. At the time, Li's wife was seven months pregnant. According to Radio Free Asia, Chinese regime gave pressure to Dr. Li's family and forced them to sign a statement to denounce the four American senators' bill. His family did not sign the statement, but couldn't take the pressure, and eventually allowed the regime to issue a statement using Dr. Li's wife's social media account, saying this. Li Wenliang is a member of Chinese Communist Party, he loved his country and would not allow anyone to use his name to hurt his country. One month later, four months after Dr. Lee passed away, his wife gave birth to a baby boy. She was reportedly saying that the boy was the last gift from her husband. At the time, their five-year-old son still didn't know that his father had passed away. He thought that he was only away for business. After his death, Chinese netizens have kept leaving messages on Dr. Li's social media account. When his second baby was born, there were over one million posts and comments. Then the Chinese Communist regime deleted all the posts. Later, under the tremendous pressure from the Chinese netizens, the regime eventually restored all the posts. This past weekend, thousands of people left messages on the anniversary of Dr. Li's death. I want to end today's video by quoting this guy. He said, Today I cried because I know that more tragedies like this will happen again in this environment of speech censorship. Thank you for watching. That's all for today. Please don't forget to share and like my video. I'll see you next time.